Hi guys, welcome to Language Arts. All right, so, oops, sorry. Um, we're gonna keep reading our story, Malcolm Little. And last, when we finished reading um, on Monday, we read about how he, his mom, uh, the state decided his mom couldn't take care of him. And so he and his brothers and sisters had to go uh, live with his parents' friends. And then he started to get into some trouble. And so they sent him to a school that had a lot of rules. But that school was like, um, this kid is extra smart. And so they sent him to a different school. And he was the only student. A student of color at that school um, but he and he really missed everybody but he was like all right I'm gonna make the best of my situation right now and I'm gonna do my best to learn um, and so the last time we saw Malcolm Little he was in his class so let's get started with the next little bit so we're just gonna read another couple pages and then on Friday we'll read some more all right. Malcolm tried to cheer himself up. He would conjure up the sweet and satisfying crunch of his mother's oatmeal cookies after a long day at school and the frenetic clucking of the chickens and the little family raised and sold, which always sounded like they were arguing. Now the memory of their squabbling provided music to his ears. He thought of how funny Big Boy looked with his pants legs rolled up, sweat pouring down his cheeks like his own private rain shower. Malcolm desperately missed the lively world of laughter and love that he had grown up in. He thought of his siblings, Wilfred, Hilda, Filbert, Reginald, Yvonne, Wesley, and his newest brother, Robert the only other people in the world who must have felt exactly as he did. Malcolm wondered if they went to bed each night longing for the same thing that kept him awake, wanting to be together as a family again. Sad, lonely, and confused, the beautiful colors of life he once knew flattened into an uninspiring shade of muted gray. The grief was stifling and nothing seemed to help. Malcolm was broken. On one overcast morning, Malcolm stood up from his desk chair and walked over to the open window, which was inviting a soft breeze into his room. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. And when he opened his eyes again, he saw something that he would never forget. Hanging delicately from a small twig on a giant evergreen tree was a cocoon. Something Louise had shown him one day in the garden. You see that peculiar little thing, Malcolm? Well, it's actually a casing spun of silk a protective covering for the creature that lives inside until it's mature enough to fly out into the world. And just then, with one tiny wing at a time, a magnificent butterfly came half fluttering, half stumbling out. It was in flight for the very first time, set free from its home, alone, and finally, face to face with the entire universe. When Malcolm saw the butterfly, that familiar symbol of freedom and transformation, he remembered who he was and where he came from. He remembered his own cocoon, the safe haven where lessons and values came like nourishment each day. With his eyes fixed, he followed the path of the butterfly flying away. At first, it seemed uncertain, perhaps confused by its new life outside of the safe little shell. 
but in time, it began to take flight, soaring through the world around it, bringing joy and color everywhere. The soaring butterfly gently opened Malcolm's heart to feel joy again. Standing there on his own two feet, he felt his roots reaching down into the earth, gripping the soil and providing the strength he needed to awaken the dormant parts of his identity. He would use the sharpness of his mind to overcome the heaviness of his heart. He would replace sadness with smarts and hardship with hard work at school. And just like the butterfly, Malcolm was ready to soar, but his resolve would soon be tested. One morning, the English teacher, Mr. Ostrowski, asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up. Malcolm, who was sitting straight up in his chair, proudly announced that he wanted to be a lawyer. His grades were certainly high enough to set him on this path, but his teacher did not believe that African Americans should have high expectations for themselves or aspire to excel. He did not believe that people like Malcolm should dream, hope, plan, or succeed. But Malcolm was now old enough to understand that Mr. Ostrowski was terribly wrong. And just as nothing had ever stopped Earl, Malcolm learned how to rise up with that same bold determination that made his father a family hero. He had good ideas and good friends at school and the can-do attitude to make something of that promising combination. Whenever Malcolm would tell a story or a joke, the kids would all gather around, their eyes fixed on the charismatic boy who was clearly different from them, but someone whom they adored and respected just the same. The little boy who had lost so much was now ready to face the world. All right, we are going to go ahead and stop there for today. We'll continue reading on Friday. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and pull up our worksheet. So let me, all right. So we have been working on UG and UNC words, U-G and U-N-K. And so today, oh, excuse me. <laughs> so today we're gonna be putting these words in ABC order. Okay, so I want you to remember to look at It'll go a little further down so I don't cut off the J. Look at the first letter of each word, okay? And I'm gonna put on a three minute timer. All right, I'll even write, oh, I don't know if you want me to write all these with my beautiful mouse handwriting. put the alphabet up at the top for you. So you can go through and you know normally when we go, sorry, when we go through our ABC, we go, okay, is there an A word? No. Is there a B word? No. And we keep going through and you look for those words. So, like I said, I'm going to put on a three-minute timer. I'll even put it up on the screen here. Oh, then I guess you won't even see any of this. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's fine. Um, no, I'm, okay. I, I know how to do it. I'll put up a three-minute timer. And then... You, sorry. And you guys have three minutes to do it on your own. Okay, and then we'll come back and we will go over it together and see if you guys were right. 
which I know you guys will be because we've practiced doing this so many times. Who knew it would take so long to write the alphabet with your mouse? Ooh. All right, well, if you can make heads or tails of this, more power to you, you guys are so smart. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a three minute timer. And when the timer goes off, then, then we'll do it together. One second. All right, go ahead and start. Thirty more seconds. Ten seconds. All right, three minutes is up. Ding, 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 ding. All right, so let's go over and see if you guys got all of them right. I'm sure you did. Let me get a new color. All right. All right, do we have any A words? No. Any B words? No. Any C words? Yes, we have chug, C-H-U-G. So we're gonna write chug. Dun, 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 dun. On number one, chug. Did y'all get that? Absolutely, I know you did. All right, let's keep going. Any D words? Yes, dunk, good job. Dunk goes under number two. Dunk, 
writing oh the mouse is so difficult for miss winston all right dunk all right let's keep going any e words no any f words no any g words no any h words Yes, hug, H-U-G, hug. Awesome, that was an awful U, I'm so sorry. Hug. All right, let's keep going. Any I words? No. Any J words? Yes, junk, J-U-N-K. So number four, you should have junk. All right, <laughs> let's see, any K words? No. Any L words? No. Any M words? No. Any N words? No. Any O words? No. Any P words? No. Any Q words? No. Any R words? No. Any S words? Yes, shrug, S-H-R-U-G, shrug. Number five, we're gonna write shrug. All right, let's keep going. Any T words? Yes, trunk, T-R-U-N-K, trunk. I'm gonna write that in number six. And that is our last word. We don't have to keep looking. All right, so my friends, you can go ahead and pause the video so that you all can make sure that your papers look like this or you can finish writing if you need to. And then you can unpause when you're ready to go to the next page, okay? So go ahead, pause, and we'll keep going in a minute. So let's keep going. We're going to be reading about Brett and Chet. So go ahead and pause this, uh, the video so that my friends at school or at home, you guys can read the story first. You can call on uh, people to read a sentence or two at, the t at a time. Or if you're at home, you can go ahead and read it all. Um, and then when you unpause, we'll read it together and then we'll answer all of the questions. Okay? So go ahead and pause and read. Awesome reading, guys. All right, now let's, I'm gonna read it for us once and then we'll answer our questions. So, Brett and Chet are best friends. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> they always eat eggs for breakfast. One time, they both read the same book called Dread the Thread. They like to do things together. Sometimes they go running and have a good sweat. They like to find shells to send to their other friend, Glenn. We'll be best friends for life, they said, and they meant it. All right. We're gonna skip, save one and two for the end. And let's go ahead and answer number three. Why do you think Brett and Chet are such good friends? I want you to go ahead and pause the video so that you guys can answer and then we'll answer it together. All right, so why do you think Brett and Chet are such good friends. Hmm. Let's think. Well, okay, they are best friends, so why are they best friends? They always eat eggs, so they like the same food. They read the same book, so they like the same books. And they like to do things together. So it sounds like, do they like the same things 
or do they like different things? The same things. They like the same things. So that means that's why they're such good friends because they like the same things. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna write, why do you think Brett and Chet are such good friends? Because they like the same, oh sorry, things. All right, go ahead and pause the video so you have time to write your sentence. All right, good job. Now let's look at number four. What do you like to do with your best friend? So go ahead and think about it. Pause the video. Think about this is not a this is not an answer that is in the story. This is an answer that is in your brain. So what do you like to do with your best friend? Brett and Chet like to eat the same food, they like to read the same books, and they like to do things together like running, working out, finding shells. So what kinds of things do you like to do with your best friend? You can pause the video and then answer the question. All right, I bet you guys came up with a lot of cool answers. Was one of the things that you like to do with your best friend, was it play together? Yeah. So I bet a lot of you like to play with your best friend. So what do you like to do with your best friend? We can write play, I, sorry, we'll do the whole sentence. I like to play with my, ooh, that M got away from me, my friend. All right, if you need to use the second line, you can, because I know that it's a lot to write. So go ahead and pause the video so that you can write your sentence. All right, number five. What is one thing that Brett and Chet like to do together? All right, so I want you to look in the story and it tells us some things that they like to do together. It says they like to do things together. What things do they like to do? Go ahead and pause the video and find your answers. All right, so what were some things that Brett and Chet like to do together? It says that they go running, they sweat, and they find shells. Awesome, so we can write They run, sweat, and Find, oh, <laughs> find sh 
shells. I am so sorry, my friends. All right, go ahead and pause the video so you can write your sentence and then we'll come back and we'll do one and two. All right, great job. I'm gonna go ahead and change to yellow for this one. This says to circle all of the short E words spelled with E. All right, here I'll erase that one. Make it a little bigger. All right, so we're gonna circle all the short E words that spelled with E. So that means our eh, eh sounding words like Brett and Chet. So I'm gonna give you two minutes. Remember, you're only looking for words with E. We're gonna find E-A words later, but right now I just want E. So A, A words like Brett and Chet that have an E in them and sound like A, A, A. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put two minutes on the timer again. Um, and we can go ahead um, da -da -da. and go ahead and start. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Right, two minutes are up. I know you guys found so many eh words that have the E spelled with an E. So let's go ahead and go through sentence by sentence like we like to do so we don't miss any words. Brett and Chet are best friends. All right, so we're looking for eh sounds. Brett and Chet our best friends, all right? They always eat eggs for breakfast. They always eat eggs for breakfast. One time they both read the same book called Dread the Thread. Now this sounds like our A words, but it, they have E-A, so we're not gonna do anything with them yet. They like to do things together. Sometimes they go running and have a good sweat. They like to find shells to send 
making myself laugh, I'm sorry. To their other friend, Glenn will be best friends for life, they said, and they meant it. All right, <laughs> did you get all of these A words with a spelled with an E? Go ahead and pause the video so you can make sure all of these words are circled. If you have any more words circled, then you need to make sure you erase them. Go ahead and pause. All right, next it says to underline all the short E words spelled with E-A. So we're still looking for A sounds, but we're gonna not just be an E, they're gonna have an E-A like breakfast, okay? Let's look at this word. They always eat bre eggs for breakfast. So this is E-A, but it doesn't make that E sound, it makes the E sound. So we are not going to underline eat. You're going to underline breakfast because it makes the re sound, e breakfast. Okay, so go ahead. I'm gonna put two minutes on the timer again. I want you to look for all of the E-A words that sound like e. okay? Go ahead and underline the words that you think are e words spelled with E-A. And timer starts now. done and time's up. All right, so let's go through these sentences again and we're looking for a sounds, but words that have E-A. Brett and Chet are best friends. They always eat eggs for breakfast. One time they both read the same book called Dread, ooh, dread the thread. They like to do things together. Sometimes they go running and have a good sweat. They like to find shells to send to their other friend, Glenn. We'll be best friends for life, they said, and they meant it. Awesome, I'm sure you got all these words. I want you to go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you've underlined these words 
If you have any extra words circled or underlined, you need to erase them. If you do not have these words circled and underlined, then you need to go ahead and fix that now. So go ahead and pause the video, get this page done, and then we will move on to the next page. All right, what is our word today? C, good job. So you guys know how to do this page. You do not need my help. You're gonna go ahead and trace the word, write the word. You can, um, you're gonna cut out your pictures or your letters, I mean, to build the word. Find all of the C's that you can find and then you're gonna make a sentence. I can't help you with your sentences today, but um, your uh, parents at home can help you if you're at home, or uh, Miss Ashley at school will help you make a sentence. So when you're ready for your sentence, let somebody know, and they'll help you write your sentence, okay? And you guys are all done with language arts once you're done with this page, okay? So go ahead. Finish this page if you want to pause this to be able to write on it or do anything, that's fine. And I'll see you guys for social personal. Bye!